In the last episode, in the continuing chaos following the death of Oda Nobunaga, we saw the outbreak of two major conflicts. The first of which being a clash between the Tokugawa, the Hojo, the Uesugi, and the Sanada over the remaining scraps of territory in the east. The second, and far more significant, was the monumental battle of Shizugatake, the result of rising tensions between Hashiba Hideyoshi and Shibata Katsuie that would see Hideyoshi take the reins of the Oda clan completely. Now, we briefly turn away from the struggle in the central regions to look towards the north for the first time in this series, as we will finally come to see the rise of the Date clan. It's no secret that I have ignored the North for a large portion of this series, as obviously it's the one region of the map that I have left to actually fill in. To be completely honest, there are sort of two reasons for that. The first of which being the conflicts in the North were not really affecting the major events going on throughout the rest of Japan. Although the warring spirit of the Sengoku Jidai was alive and well in the north, it had no direct impact that was large enough to influence the flow of events of the period thus far. That is about to change however, as we will soon come to see a rising star in the north that will give a face and a name to the entire region. The other reason I have yet to touch the north is because it is a straight up mess. So now that we are here, let's try to dissect what this is all supposed to be. In the Tohoku region, there were many influences. The Nanbu, Tsugaru, Mogami, Ashina, Soma, and of course, the Date. These are some of the larger powers that have come to dominate Tohoku. Yet history will come to remember one of these clans as being far more significant than the others. That of course being the Date. The Date family has its roots all the way back into the 12th century, being related to the prominent Fujiwara clan. Throughout their long history, the Date had maintained control over a significant portion of Mutsu province. By the outbreak of the Sengoku Jidai, they were one of the more influential powers in Tohoku. Yet they were not by any means massive or greater than their many northern neighbors. Being the age of war that the Sengoku period was, the Date were often thrust into many conflicts that erupted across the north. They had even at one point broken apart into a nearly disastrous civil war that lasted for roughly six years, known as the Tenbun no Ran. By the year 1566, the clan was under the rule of the young Date Teramune, a strong-willed leader who was the son of Date Haramune, who had won the Tenbun no Ran against his father. In the fall of that year, Teramune and his wife, Yoshihime, of the Mogami clan, had a son, a child known as Botinmaru. Eventually, this boy would be given the name Masamune, the same name as a previous lord of the Date clan that had led the family into glory. Unfortunately, Masamune's life would start out very troubled. Since infancy, he had suffered from a severe smallpox affliction that had caused unsightly and painful swelling in his right eye. Because of this, as a child he began to show signs of a great lack of confidence within himself and was often prone to episodes of depression. His mother Yoshihime also began to take note of his condition and is said to have begun to believe young Masamune was unfit for any form of leadership. Left alone, Masamune would have become a neglected child that history would have forgotten. Yet as the story goes, he would be bolstered by two key individuals. The first of which was his wet nurse, a kind woman named Katakura Kita, who looked after Masamune in ways his mother did not, fostering the boy's martial insight through expanding his knowledge with texts of war and military classics. However, her actions alone would not save Masamune. Her half-brother, Katakura Kojuro, later known as Kakitsuna, would also play a massive role in Masamune's youth. 
Kujuro, although a little bit older, was always Masamune's friend and loyal ally throughout childhood. And it would be he who finally helped Masamune with his affliction to his eye, as Kojuro would be the one to carve it out with a knife. Free from the pain and embarrassment the eye had caused him, and through the friendship of Kojiro and the guidance of his wet nurse, Masamune regained all the confidence that was lost to him and fully came into the position he was destined for, heir to the Date clan. In 1581, at the age of 14, Masamune joined his father on his first campaign in their war against the Soma clan. Although he was eager and ambitious throughout his first battle, nearly getting himself killed were it not for the aid of Kochiro, Masamune was still able to display everything he needed to for his father to see that he was fit and worthy to succeed him, which he did just three years later in 1584. Yet he would not enjoy a long period of grace following his ascension to Lord of the Clan, as soon a prominent Date retainer named Ochi Saratsuna defected to the Ashina Clan. Angered by this betrayal and wishing to send a message, Masamune revealed his fiery temper that would in time earn him the nickname the One-Eyed Dragon. He declared war on the Ashina and Ochi Saratsuna, sallying out to avenge this disgrace. His initial actions would unfortunately be halted due to stiff Ashina resistance. Yet, this would not take the wind out of his aggression, as several months later, his forces finally laid siege to Saratsuna's stronghold of Otemori. Masamune would take the castle and butcher some 800 people of all ages who were left inside. Saratsuna would later flee to Obama Castle, yet when learning of the massacre at Otemori, he burned Obama Castle to the ground and fled deeper into the safety of Ashina territory. Masamune's hot-blooded nature and his fiery temper was an asset when at war. Yet, in matters of diplomacy, it would soon become an issue. The Nihonmatsu, a clan descended from the northern branch of the Hatakayama, had for a time been bitter rivals with the Date. Wishing to set the feud aside, Nihonmatsu Yoshitsugu had continually reached out to Masamune in aims of finding a new peace between them. However, Masamune refused all of his attempts. Finally, by 1585, Yoshitsugu turned to Masamune's father in hopes that Terumune could help mediate the situation and help his son see reason. Although initially, talks between Terumune and Yoshitsugu progressed very well, somehow things would devolve and result in Terumune being captured and held hostage by Yoshitsugu and his forces. Perhaps Yoshitsugu realized that although he would be able to convince Tiramune the merits of peace, they would never be able to convince Masamune. Maybe through holding his father hostage, Yoshitsugu would be able to guarantee peace between the clans. Whatever the case, having heard what had happened, Masamune with a small group of soldiers quickly set off in aims to save his father, catching up with Yoshitsugu and his forces near the Abukuma River. As Date soldiers took aim at the Nihonmatsu, a tense stalemate arose as Masamune was afraid that his bullets would end up accidentally killing his father. Yet eventually, Terumune would cry out to shoot anyway and not worry about his own safety, a command which was received as fighting commenced. And although Masamune was able to win the brief struggle, his father in the chaos of the clash was slain. As for Yoshitsugu, it is not entirely clear what happened. While most sources claim he too was killed in the fighting, others claim that he may have escaped. No matter what the outcome was, what followed was a full war between the two clans. However, with the Date under Masamune now being viewed as a hostile threat in the region, many clans flocked to side with the Nihonmatsu. This included but was not limited to the Soma, Ashina and Satake. Masamune was now desperately outnumbered. What ensued in early 1586 would come to be known as the Battle of Hitatoribashi. Knowing he was facing overwhelming numbers, Masamune quickly moved to establish a defensive strategy, as it is estimated that the Date only had 7,000 men to contend against 30,000. One by one, the Date defensive fortress line began to fall to the enemy coalition. Eventually, pushed back to his castle of Motomiya, Masamune, Kojuro, and the rest of their garrison 
prepared for what they assumed would be their final valiant stand, and the end of the Date clan. However, fate would save him. The Satake portion of the enemy coalition was unfortunately forced to withdraw, as in their absence, the Satomi had taken advantage and attacked their territory in Hitachi. With a crucial portion of the army now missing, the remaining Nihonmatsu, Soma, and Ashina forces believed that their numbers were now insufficient to take Motomiya from the Date. Thus they all withdrew. Masamune was free. This brush with sure defeat would no doubt have a profound effect on Masamune, as he would come to think more strategically in the years to come, as in time, his name and his clan would become increasingly significant. So, what can we learn? Northern Japan, the Tohoku region, was a mess of warring clans, not too different from the rest of the island. Yet one name would soon come to rise, Date Masamune. Although he endured a troubled childhood, Masamune would in time find renewed confidence within himself and come to lead the clan with an iron fist. As right away, in the first year of his reign at the head of the Date family, he would engage in a brutal crusade against a traitor to his clan. However, his aggressive demeanor would later result in a brush with almost sure defeat, as a coalition would rise to bring him down. Yet, as fate would have it, he would survive and allow the Date to continue on their path into prominence. In the next episode, we return to the developing situation in central Japan, as a new conflict will soon arise between Hashiba Hideyoshi and Tokugawa Ieyasu, resulting in what will be remembered as the Battle of Komaki Nagakute. Thank you for watching, and don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that notification bell if you enjoyed this video and found it to be most informative.